Hello everyone, today let's talk about how to use the sum formula for the sine to find an expression like the sine of 75 degree, okay? So um, because it's 75 degree here, we cannot really just find the value immediately. So we can actually use a sum formula to help us find its exact value. How do we do that? Well, first we gotta write it as the sum of two angles. Um, so we are going to usually just write it as a sum of two special angles right here, like 30 degree, 45 degree, or 60, because we can just use the right triangles to find the value for the sine or the cosine of those angles. And so how do we write the 75 as a sum of two angles? We can actually write it as 30 degree plus the 45 degree, right? So we can say uh, 30 degree, okay, so that's the first one. And then plus the, what is the second angle? The second angle would be 45. And then you may say, uh, does it matter which one that we put first, it actually doesn't matter, okay? So we can say that the 30 is the A, and then the 45 degree is the B. So now, what happens is that we can apply the formula directly, so we can write it as sine of A. A is what? A is 30, so we are going to get sine of 30 degree, and then cosine of B. B is 45 degree, right? So we are going to get 45 degree. And then plus, and then plus the next one, cosine of A, right? Cosine of A, cosine of A would be 30. And then the next one would be sine of B. B is 45, so we are going to get 45 over here. So now we actually have applied the sum formula. The next step is to actually find the value of each of those sine 30, cosine 45, cosine 30, and sine 45 degree. How do we find that? We can actually just refer to the two special right triangles. And since all those quadrants are in quadrant one, then what we need to do is to just worry about finding the ratio. We don't need to worry about the signs anymore. All those are positive, right? So we are gonna get sine of 30. So sine of 30 is the, looking at this angle 30 over here, uh, it would be what? opposite over the hypotenuse. So it will be one over two. So our first number for this turn, first factor would be one over two. Cosine 45 degrees. So if we look at the cosine 45 degree, we're gonna look at this angle or that one doesn't matter. So for cosine 45, we are going to look at the, what, the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So it will be radical two over two. So we have, Radical 2 over 2, then plus, and then now the next one, this is the first factor of the second turn. So we are going to get cosine of 30 degree. So we are going to look at this one. So cosine of 30 degree, it would be what? Adjacent over the hypotenuse. So radical 3 over 2. So we are going to get radical 3 over 2. And then times sine of 45 degree. So looking at the 45 opposite over the adjacent. So radical 2 over 2. So radical 2 over 2. So now we actually have the value for each of those expressions right here. Now multiplying those two together, we get radical two over two, plus what about this one? Radical six, radical three times radical two is radical six over, well four actually, I was going too fast, so that would be four and four here, two times two is four. And so now that is the final answer. Or if you want, you can put it as a single fraction, so it would be radical two plus radical six, and then over four, and so that's that, okay? And then now let's look at the next example. Okay, in the previous example, we used the sum formula for the sine. This time we are going to look at the sum formula for the cosine, but we can also use the difference formula for this, this problem right here, but it's possible then we try to use the, the sum formula because in general it's going to be easier. So first, now we got to write the 165 degree as the sum of two angles and uh, those angles must be uh, special ones so that we can find the values easily. Okay, so how do we do that? Well, first we can think about multiples of those ones. Uh, let's say if we multiply the 60 by 2, we are going to get 120. So 120 would be a possible choice. So we can actually start with a 120 degree. And then 165 minus 120 would give us the what? The 45, right? So we are going to get 45. 45 is one of the special ones. So we can actually use 45. So 120 plus 45 degree would give us the 165. So now we have 
cosine of the sum of two angles so we can apply the formula so we can actually start now so let's just label this this one is a and this one is b okay so we are going to write cosine of 120 so 120 over here and then cosine of what 45 right the second angle so we are going to get 45 over here and then now don't forget that this would be a minus sign here when we are applying the sum formula this sign will be opposite of that one so we are going to have a minus sign over here and then next we are going to get the sign of 120 so we have sine of 120 here that's a and then sine b right so sine b would be sine of 45 degree okay so now we have finish applying the formula. So now all we need to do is to com uh, compute each part right here so that we can find the exact value. So what is cosine of 120 degree? Well, first we recognize that this angle 120 degree, it's the angle with a terminal sign the second quadrant. So that means cosine will be a negative value. So we are gonna put the negative first. And this 120 has a reference angle of 60, as you know, right? So in that case, what happens? What happens is that we can actually just refer to this right triangle here and look at the angle 60. We are looking at cosine. Cosine would be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So we get one over two. Now the difference between cosine 60 and then the cosine 120 degree would be what would be the, the sine difference, right? So because this has the terminal side in the second quadrant, so we have a minus sign right here. What about the cosine 45? That's in the first quadrant, so that will be easy, so it will be positive. So cosine 45 would be looking at this angle here, adjacent over the hypotenuse, so radical two over two. So we are gonna have that. And then minus now the sine at 120 degree. And so again, this is in the second quadrant. So now what really happens is that we are going to um, have a positive value because that's the sine at 120. So Again, we are going to look at the um, the angle 60, so opposite over the hypotenuse because that we're looking at the sine, right? So opposite over hypotenuse would be radical three over two. And then times sine of 45 degrees. So sine of 45 degree opposite over the hypotenuse, so radical two over two, so radical two over two. So now we are actually ready so we have what negative radical two over four, and then there is a minus sign right here. And then multiply those two radical six over four, and that would be the answer of cosine of one sixty five degree. Or we can actually put it as a single fraction. So we are going to factor all the negative sign in the front. So we are going to get radical two plus radical six, and then over four. So now that would be our final answer. Okay, so we are going to look at another example. This time we are going to look at tangent. Okay, we already have seen how to use the sum formula for the sine and cosine. This time we are going to look at one with tangent. And as you can see here, this 345 degree, we can also write it as the sum of two special angles that we can actually just refer to those two special right triangles right here. So how do we do that? Well, the tangent formula looks a little bit different. It's, it has a quotient over here, but that's not going to be really different regarding on how we apply the formula. We still need to break this as the sum of two angles, right? So how do we break it? Well, one of them is that we recognize that there was a 45, right? So we can simply just write it as what? 300, so 300 is a special angle, and then plus what? Just 45, right? So we are going to get 45, which is the angle B. And so as you can see, this one is A, and then the other one is going to be B. Okay, so the next step is really just to apply the formula. So we are going to get a tangent of A, A is 300 degree. And then what about the B? The B is 45, so tangent of 45 degree. Then what happens is that we are going to get the, uh, the denominator now. So we are going to have what? One minus the tangent of 300 degree. And then the tangent of, what is that? B, B is 45, so we are gonna get 45 degree. And then so now we just compute each part. And then how do we compute each part? Well, just 
do each one separately. So now tangent of 300 degree, 300 degree is actually uh, has is having a reference angle 60. So we are going to look at the 60 here, but we also need to pay attention to the quadrant. So it's terminal side is in quadrant four. So what happened is that tangent will be a negative. So we are going to just put the minus sign there first and then tangent of 30. I mean, tangent of 60 is what? Well, we look at the opposite over the adjacent. So opposite is radical 3, adjacent is 1. So we are going to get radical 3 over 1, which is just radical 3, right? So radical 3 over 1. And then now plus tangent of 45. So this one is easy, quadrant 1. So we get positive and then tangent is going to be what? 45 is opposite over the adjacent because we're looking at this angle right here so opposite over adjacent radical 2 over radical 2 which is just 1 so we just get the 1 over there okay and so what about the denominator so denominator it's just the one over there and then minus what tangent of 300 degree we already figure out the answer over here so we can just copy right um, so we get negative radical 3 now be careful with the sign because this this negative sign here comes from the value, the tangent of 300 degree, but then there is another minus sign right here, which comes directly from the formula. So make sure that you still write both signs right here. What about the tangent of 45 degree? The tangent of 45 is just one, right? So we just, just put the one over here. So now what are we getting? We are actually just getting one minus square root of three. I actually just reorder the terms. I put the one first and then minus radical three, okay? And then in the denominator, it would be one. And then this, this is negative radical three times one. It's just negative radical three minus minus. We have plus, right? So we get one plus square root of three. Now that can be uh, the final answer. But if you want to rationalize the denominator, then we can do that. Okay. So if we do that, then what happens? We are going to, well, let me just, let me just write some calculation on the side. So we are going to get one minus radical three over 1 plus radical 3, we can multiply the top and the bottom by 1 minus radical 3. So we are multiplying by 1. We are not changing the problem. Okay. So what happens is that the, the top becomes what? 1 minus radical 3 square. And then in the denominator, we are going to just use the difference of two squares formula. So square the first term, which is just, just one, right? Square the radical three, we're going to get three. And then we just put the minus sign right here. Okay, so now expand the top one. Expand the top one is that we are going to get one and then minus two times those two. So we get radical three and then plus square the radical three. So we're going to get the three here. So now the denominator, what about the denominator? Just like the two. So continue with the calculation. We are going to get what? One plus three is going to be four minus two radical three divided by negative two. So you can actually break up the fraction to simplify this. So we are going to get what? Four over negative two and then plus negative two radical three over negative two. So cancellation, we're going to get what? Negative two and then cancel cancel those, right? Negative two, negative two. So we are going to get uh, plus radical three. So those minus signs will also get canceled, right? So we are going to get negative two plus radical three. So that is also another form of the final answer. So it's up to you which form that you want to use or depends on your requirement for your from your teacher. So uh, we either you can just write on this one or that one. Okay, so that's it for all those three examples. I hope that now you know how to apply the sum formula for the sine, the cosine or the tangent. Okay, so we'll do more examples next time. I will see you.